Welcome to MBSA QIP's instructional video on Standard 4.1, Credentialing Guidelines for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgeons. The purpose of this video is to provide you with an understanding of the credentialing process, why it is important, and where credentialing guidelines are best found in your institution. Let's first focus on what credentialing guidelines are and why they are important. Credentialing guidelines serve to guarantee that practitioners have the proper training and possess the necessary skills to safely provide services and treat potential complications for a specific subgroup of patients. In this case, MBSA QIP is looking for specific, separate from general surgery, metabolic and bariatric surgery credentials. Items often included in these credentials are current licensure, professional education, training, documented experience with associated procedures, and supporting references that speak to a physician's competence to safely carry out the duties as enumerated in the credentialing guideline document. Credentialing guidelines should be rigorous enough to guarantee patient safety. However, they should not be so rigorous that they unnecessarily restrict the number of competent practitioners credentialed to provide patient care within a center. Specific recommendations for metabolic and bariatric surgery credentialing guidelines are detailed in the MBSA QIP standards, Optimal Resources for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, Standard 4.1, Credentialing Guidelines for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgeons. These serve as an excellent guideline for centers to develop their own unique credentialing guidelines. However, it should be noted that centers do not have to follow these guidelines verbatim. Credentials should be verified and documented upon a practitioner's application for privileges at their institution. The status of a provider's credentials should also be reassessed at an interval specified by your center's state governing body, and this interval should be clearly stated in your center's credentialing policy. It is imperative that your center verify credentials initially and at the specified interval in order to assure compliance. The decision whether or not to provide credentials to an ap applying practitioner resides within the local center's credentialing committee or their appointee. This committee, or the office that provides administrative support for this committee, is where credentialing guidelines and practitioner credentialing documentation can typically be found. If your center does not have their own credentialing committee, the necessary documentation and information may also be found by contacting the medical affairs or medical staff office. Common compliance issues that have been noted during MBSA QIP site visits include metabolic and bariatric credentialing guidelines that are not separate and distinct from general surgery credentialing guidelines, insufficient documentation of practitioner training, insufficient case volume to support recredentialing requirements, insufficient nonspecific or unclear credentialing requirements as to ensure an appropriate level of experience, competence, and oversight among the practitioners being considered, overly erroneous or exclusionary requirements resulting in unnecessary restriction on the ability of a practitioner already within the clinical setting to achieve metabolic and bariatric surgery credentialing, inadequate or inconsistent frequency of reassessment of credentialing for current practitioners, failure to maintain proper records of credentialing assessment or reassessment, failure to set and maintain a frequency for updating the credentialing requirements based upon developments in clinical best practice, changes in the center's clinical environment, or the inclusion of new procedures as they develop. We hope that you found this instructional video helpful. For questions regarding credentialing, privileging, or any other questions regarding standards compliance, please contact our team at mbsaqip at facs.org. Thank you.